Here are Tokyo's top 10 most visited and buzzing tourist spots. The question is, would they earn a spot in your top 10? Let me know. There are various observation decks scattered across Tokyo that will give you a great vantage point of the city. In fact, I always recommend that you start off your adventure by visiting one of these on your first day because it will help you grasp just how huge Tokyo City is and help you get your bearings. When it comes to observation decks, they each have their advantages and charm. And I know that there will be a discussion in the comment section, please do by the way, regarding which is best. But I'm literally mentioning the ones that are currently most popular with tourists, which is why I'm starting off with a Tokyo Skytree. It's actually the tallest structure in Japan and amongst the tallest in the world, standing at 634 meters, it offers two observation decks providing stunning panoramic views of Tokyo. There's a planetarium, an aquarium, an indoor theme park, and let's not forget a Pokemon store. And it also features special events and illuminations throughout the year, making it a great area to explore. My tip, however, is to book online for a discount on this pricier tourist spot. And it also helps you beat the queues at the ticket counter too. The next location is said to be Tokyo's top tourist destination as it has a mixture of culture and tourist crowds. And you could even walk from the sky tree if you wanted to. Zen Soji Temple in Asakusa is one of my favorite areas to hang out. It's Tokyo's oldest and most famous Buddhist temple where you will be able to immerse yourself in the traditional atmosphere other areas of Tokyo might lack. Browse and eat your way through Nakamisa shopping street and witness the majestic Kaminari Mon, if I can say it correctly, gates, also known as the Fanda Gates. My tip is to not miss out on having melon pan. It's a delicious treat with a sugary, crispy exterior and a fluffy bread on the inside. And the area surrounding the temple has some of the best that Tokyo has to offer. So don't miss it out. Next on the list is Akihabara, also known as Aki and Tokyo's electric town. It is a must for tech and anime enthusiasts. This vibrant district in Tokyo is a hub for electronic gadgets, gaming, consoles, anime, manga, and cosplay culture. It's filled with multi-level stores and you can explore filled with the latest tech gadgets. You'll be able to browse through specialty shops for anime and manga merchandise and immerse yourself in the energetic atmosphere that this area has to offer. From arcades to themed cafes and made cafes, and unique experiences. Akihabara offers a one-of-a-kind blend of technology and pop culture that you won't find anywhere else. It's a geek's paradise and a truly unforgettable experience. And my top tip here is to not miss having a go at the many crane games and don't shy away from maybe heading to a maid cafe. Tsukiji Outer Market makes a list as one of the top areas to check out when visiting Tokyo. The fish market itself might be gone, but the Tsukiji Outer Market continues to be a captivating destination that combines culinary delights, cultural immersion, and a traditional atmosphere. You'll be able to explore stalls selling fresh produce, snacks, and unique souvenirs like traditional Japanese knives and ceramics. Engage with friendly vendors and get a glimpse into Tokyo's food culture. The experience and the charm of this traditional Japanese market is the reason why I made it into its own video showcasing my top things to do in a morning in Tokyo. You might want to check that guide out as it will give you a step-by-step -step guide of things you can do and see with Tsukiji as a starting point. Whether you're a food lover or seeking a memorable shopping experience, Tsukiji Outer Market is a must-visit destination, in my opinion anyway. The Imperial Palace in Tokyo is known as a must-visit destination for several compelling reasons. First and foremost, it is the official residence of the Emperor, providing a glimpse into the country's rich imperial history and culture. Palace grounds boast serene gardens and beautiful architecture, offering a peaceful escape from the busy city. Visitors can explore historic landmarks and admire picturesque scenery and traditional Japanese structures. My tip for a visit to the Imperial Palace would be to make sure that you check out the schedule for the public openings of the palace's inner gardens, as access is limited and only on certain days and times. Tokyo Tower is a symbol of Tokyo and the second observation deck to feature on this list. It is a must visit for great views and iconic charm. It stands at 333 meters and offers panoramic vistas of the cityscape 
from its observation decks. Capture stunning photographs, witness the dazzling city lights, and on clear days, capture a glimpse of the majestic Mount Fuji. And just like other viewing decks, you can explore the tower's other attractions, including museums, shops, restaurants, etc. Tokyo Tower's distinctive orange design adds to its charm and its central location makes it easy to access. Whether day or night, Tokyo Tower provides an unforgettable experience and a remarkable perspective on the beauty and grandeur of the city. And my top tip here would be to purchase tickets in advance and consider visiting in the evening as it will allow you to witness the breathtaking city lights of Tokyo. All right, Shibuya Crossing. I think this one needs no introduction. And if you think of Tokyo, you'll probably think of this famous crossing. You can witness the famous Shibuya Scramble Crossing outside of Shibuya Station which becomes a mesmerizing spectacle as hundreds of people cross the intersection at the same time. The area of Shibuya makes for a great place to explore due to its wide range of stores, boutiques and department stores, catering to various styles and tastes, and even has a fantastic Shibuya sky viewing platform where you can capture the crossing from above or visit the famous Starbucks overlooking the crossing, if you can find a seat that is. My tip is to try to capture a time lapse of this crossing as it will show how organized the chaos really is. Harajuku and Takashita Street could potentially be one of the most crowded areas, but is certainly full of energy due to its unique fashion and creative subcultures. With colorful shops, vintage boutiques and trendy cafes, diverse fashion subcultures and some cosplay culture, this vibrant district offers a mouth-watering array of street foods and treats that will satisfy your cravings. From famous crepes filled with a variety of ingredients to irresistible cotton candy in all colors and flavors, this area is especially great for those who are young at heart, like me. <laughs> My tip is actually to head to the side streets for less queues for those snacks. And for me personally, it's an area that is also great when searching for those quirky t-shirts too. Meiji Shrine is so easy to access from Harajuku, you can easily walk to it. It is another hotspot for cultural significance, but due to its size and grandness, this one can actually feel less crowded and make for a great escape in the middle of this metropolis that is Tokyo. Meiji is a serene Shinto shrine dedicated to the Emperor Meiji. And as you walk towards the shrine, you will stroll through these tranquil forested paths. And if you are lucky, you will even experience a traditional Shinto ceremony. The shrine provides a peaceful retreat from the bustling city and offers a glimpse into Japan's rich culture and spiritual heritage. My tip would actually be to try and visit during the weekdays or early in the morning to have an even more serene experience. Shinjuku Gyoen National Garden makes this list as a top garden to visit in Tokyo due to its serene atmosphere and meticulously manicured landscapes in the heart of Tokyo. The garden features traditional Japanese, French formal and English landscape gardens and is an ideal spot for cherry blossom viewing in the spring and autumn colors in the fall. I personally love visiting this park and I'm always surprised as to how large it is. So make sure you make time when visiting the park. My tip would also be to explore the area of Shinjuku itself. It is considered as the energetic heart of Tokyo with its towering skyscrapers, neon lights, Kabukicho, charming golden guy, which is a collection of narrow alleys filled with tiny bars. There will be plenty to explore and check out too. Okay. I had to add a bonus one because yeah, this one makes it into the top 10 places to visit in pretty much every internet list out there. And that's the Tokyo Disney parks. However, did you know, <laughs> did you know that these parks are actually not located in Tokyo? Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Sea are located in Chiba Prefecture, not far from Tokyo, which is the reason why I didn't include it in my list. Tokyo really is a great city to visit. And in this video, I've highlighted the areas and things most tourists flock to. I do, however, recommend that you explore further afield and try to get lost. So you might want to check out some of the many other things and sites there are to see. So why not join the adventure and subscribe? It's only a click away and it's free. Also, I'll actually be traveling across Japan on an epic six week adventure as a tourist, which will not only be documented on here, but also on my new, yay, new second channel for Happy Gaijin, 
where I will be posting more up-to-date vlog style videos and streams and hopefully you'll be able to get to know me a little better too. So why not show your support on there too and be amongst my first subscribers. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this has been an informative video that may have brought some insights for your future trip to Japan. And if you've watched this far, then thank you very much. How about proving it by simply adding a Mount Fuji emoji to your comment, even if you have absolutely nothing to say. Thanks for watching. Till next time, stay positive and be a happy gaijin. Arigatou gozaimasu. Gracias. Thanks. Bye.